Here's our Paint app. It works on Mac, Windows and Linux, with a native look and feel on each platform. No virtual machines, no embedded browsers, just a single C++ codebase that compiles the machine code for the given operating system. All the rectangles, circles and squiggles the user draws are represented by types deriving from some abstract shape. This is a classic example of a polymorphic class design that's been around for decades. In this tutorial, I will show you an alternative to this architecture that is simpler, faster and cleaner than the traditional inheritance-based approach. So remember to like and subscribe and let's dive in. Here's our abstract shape class. It defines some common behaviors. Each shape can be drawn on the graphic context and interactively created through dragging. The subclasses add their own properties. For example, the path class contains a list of points, whereas the circle has a center and a radius. Every subclass also overrides the virtual methods, implementing them in a class-specific way. This has some advantages. For example, we can store a vector of base classes, insert the concrete implementations, circles, paths and rectangles, and iterate over that vector, calling a virtual method on each object. Thanks to the dynamic polymorphism, the correct draw method will be called. This is all well known by every C++ developer. The shapes example is one of the most popular ways to illustrate how polymorphism works in C++. It's almost exclusively shapes, some Animal Kingdom example, or a UI framework where an image button derives from a button, which in turn derives from a control, etc. On the one hand, inheritance is a natural way of establishing relationships between classes. A circle is a shape, it derives some behaviors from the shape class, like the draw functions, and adds its own stuff, like a radius. On the other hand, when adding more behaviors, the base class grows larger and larger, and the whole hierarchy becomes more challenging to maintain. The typical object-oriented approach solves this with the visitor pattern, which separates the operations from the data. The problem is this uses double dispatch, a technique that's quite complex and difficult to reason about. There's a way to simplify this by using the modern C++ std variant template. Let's start by cleaning up the shape subclasses. We remove the base class, virtual functions and special methods. We end up with a super simple aggregate type with only public fields. That's all we need from our shapes. Instead of declaring a common ancestor for the classes, we join them in a variant. As with dynamic polymorphism, our shape can hold a circle, a rectangle or a path, and the user can determine the value type at runtime. Since we don't use virtual functions, we don't need pointers anymore. Our vector of shapes can now hold plain values instead of unique pointers. This is great. Simple classes, no pointers, but how do we perform operations on these variant types? We do that using the stdVisit function. We are dealing with visitors again, but these are much simpler than the classic object-oriented pattern. Our drawing visitor now has a function call operator for each type instead of the visit method. To use it, we declare the object, iterate over our shapes and call stdVisit. And that's it, no double dispatch, no virtual functions abuse, no need to write boilerplate accept visit code for each class. But this gets even better. In the mouse move handler, we want to draw a shape as the user drags with the mouse. Instead of creating a separate visitor object, we provide the behaviors directly in the std visit call as lambdas. Beautiful. Now, what is this little visitor thing here? I'll admit that its definition can be intimidating if you don't know templates well, but this construct might become a part of the standard at some point because it's so helpful. Here we take an advantage of the fact that lambdas are objects with the function call operator. Our template derives from a set of classes and incorporates the call operator from each one. Then we have the deduction guide. When providing the objects in the constructor, create the visitor object that derives from all of them. In the std visit call, we construct that visitor by providing a list of lambdas. Using the deduction guide, the compiler will create a temporary object that derives from these lambdas and has their function call operators, just like our handwritten drawing visitor. See Jason Turner's videos on lambdas if you want more details. Let's continue. We must also update our visitors for the new architecture in the XML serializer. It's the same code as before, with different method names. The deserialization function is another place where we can eliminate pointers and create plain values instead. We do the same in the factory method used to create shapes on the canvas. We return values instead of pointers. 
we don't have to worry about object copies. The standard guarantees copy elision when returning temporary objects from a function. The app works exactly as before, but with much simpler code. No double dispatch, no boilerplate code, just aggregate classes and simple visitors. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.